Hello, and welcome to this video on modified yeast. In mid-2015, the internet and old media was afire over the media release, citing the successful production of opioids from yeast. Opium from yeast? You may say, and yes, opium from yeast, not poppies. This discovery is an extension to the already extensive field of research in genetically modifying yeast. Briefly, yeast has been modified by humans for millennia. Specialized yeast was selected through environmental pressures for low temperature fermentation, as seen when brewing lager at 14 degrees centigrade, as opposed to ale yeast which brews at 23 degrees centigrade. This variation is on top of selecting for wine yeasts, cider yeasts, baking yeasts, and more. To begin with, there was a good array of yeast. These had already been selected for desirable traits, but this was a time-consuming and often unpredictable process. To explain why, we need to look at how yeast mutates. The full explanation of how genes mutate has been provided in another video. But briefly, genes in a healer case are cross-linked, and by taking three of the matched pairs, it creates a, an amino acid. A chain of amino acids create a protein. By creating a daisy chain of proteins, you achieve a function. Radiation can change how these pairs match up and how the nucleotides work. Sometimes they can destroy the nucleotides, and by destroying them, the entire gene's function ceases. Where the DNA is broken, the yeast cell may die, and this is the most common outcome. This is called mutation. Occasionally, it produces a new product, though. It creates a working gene with a random set of instructions added into it. This, however, also often leads to death, as the product it creates replaces something essential to cell function. Both loss of function and the creation of a new function is similar to cancer in humans, in general bad for life. On rare occasions, this mutation will produce a new beneficial product. This being good increases its use and may be carried on to the next generation. When radiation produces changes in any one or more of the 5.5 thousand genes in yeast, it is difficult to know if it is only the desirable aspects that are mutated. As an example, ethanol. This may be increased, but the gene responsible for this may also be the gene responsible for aldehydes. And if aldehydes and ethanol are both increased, it leads to a toxic brew. So, radiation produces a change in any one or more of these cells. It's an uncertain result overall, and with an estimated 2 to 10,000 cells per milliliter of fluid, it can range from one cell with a 10 to the 14th power of a specific mutation to a 10 to the 24th power of a mutation. More reliable, effective, and reproducible methods were needed for GMO yeast. Over time, researchers developed methods to get plasmids into yeast. Cells where the specialized genes could be inserted into the DNA structure reliably and with a known delivery method. This is done by getting a healthy culture of yeast, then heating it up in a solution. This improves the ability of the plasmid to cross the yeast cell wall. A second treatment is then used to open up the DNA of the cell, or more specifically, the nuclear envelope, giving access to the genetic code of the yeast cell. Then, a design breakpoint in the plasmid opens up. This makes it possible for the new gene to be stitched or patched into the existing DNA of the yeast cell. This new gene often also carries a selectable gene, such as antibiotic resistance or a specific sugar substrate usage ability. By using this as a selector, only successfully mutated yeast will be carried on in a new cell culture. This gives a functional yeast cell with the new gene almost always successfully, and overall, cells that can inherit this gene and carry it on to future generations. The important distinction from the alarmist media is that, in the case of their research, the opioid-inducing gene, which was transplanted from a plant into a yeast cell, required highly specialized knowledge skill sets, equipment, and resources. Things that are not publicly available and are unlikely to be sourced by the local drug lord, or possibly even a cartel. 
This leaves the simple message that the media reporting on it has been surprisingly alarmist. But the method that has been described so far is the established method to modify yeast genes. There are newer methods available now, such as CRISPR, and these emerging technologies will both simplify processes such as genetically modifying yeast, but also make it more accessible. Thank you for watching. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.